Thank you, I love you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And I know before me there was Brian Lentz. Yeah. And then Trevetti, is he here? Yeah. And Barbara McElvain Smith. Yeah. He truly was a mentor of mine. So thank you, everybody, and thank you for being here. Look, everybody remembers a young senator from Illinois, six days, no, seven, before the Iowa caucus, and he made a speech. He said, our moment is now to repair the world and to heal a nation. This morning I went down and I started down near the art museum. Juvenile diabetes, a cure, a walk for the cure. I just came from an African American church. 28% are African American males. Only 28% are graduating from school in Philadelphia. And you know what it is for whites? 33%. I tell people I remember being on the ground in Afghanistan, head of the Navy's anti-terrorism unit. It was a late night, short mission. A couple Navy SEALs standing around. No roof. Windows broken. Looking out about 2 a.m. in the morning. And yeah, the thought goes through your mind. A little bit of repair, and we might not have to have been here. Heal the nation. My gosh. There isn't anybody here who's giving us their time today that doesn't believe that America is special. And believe more than anything else in the ideals of this country. But there isn't anybody here that also doesn't believe that the greatest character in this world, and that's the American character, is this wonderful alliance between rugged individualism that has always been alive with the common good, the common enterprise. Yeah, yeah, right. We need everybody yeah. Yeah. if this nation is to succeed. Yeah. I go places and I constantly think as I walk through those streets down there about a story. And I think it might have been President Clinton where I heard it years ago about a, a politician that actually went in front of a group, probably like this. They happened to be farmers. And he said to them, if your neighbor's barn had turned down, burned down, and you had two barns, would you let your neighbor store his grain in that barn? And one of the farmers called out, yes, I would. And he said, if in that fire your neighbor had lost his tractor and you had two tractors, would you lend one of your two tractors to that neighbor? And that farmer yelled out, yes, I would. And then he said, if you had two cows and your farmer had lost one in that fire, would you lend that neighbor of yours to one of your two cows? And there was silence. And this politician went up to the farmer and said, why? You'd give him a tractor, you'd give him a barn, why not your cows? He says, I don't have two barns. I don't have two tractors, but I got two cows. <laughs> you all have something that's most precious that I'm asking you to give. And that's your time. I need you, yeah. not for Joe Sesta. I've done everything I wanted to in life by 1985. Command a ship at sea. Yeah. I have been given such a fortune by this nation. Everything from command of that carry battle to believing men and women in the war to serving President Clinton in the White House. I mean, what didn't you like? The peace of prosperity. Yeah. This is my debt to you to pay back. My daughter was saved by you, and you know it, by the health care plan that I have. I'm asking you to give your time. And that's something hard to ask people today. 
where their lives have been ripped apart, their livelihood slammed. And they want to hold someone accountable. But they want to believe again. Everywhere I go, everywhere in this wonderful Keystone State of our nation, Pennsylvania, everybody I see just wants to believe again. I need your time. Because there are those who are Pied Pipers, taking advantage of, at times, the anger, the rightful concern that we have as citizens. There are extreme candidates. There is Christine O'Donnell. There is Sarah Palin. There is Patrick Toomey. I ask you to keep in mind that ticket, O'Donnell, Toomey, Palin, is something that is so extreme, not just as candidates on the fringe element side, the fringe of the Tea Party, because I understand the concerns of many in the Tea Party, but that fringe element whose policies are so extreme. Do away with the 14th Amendment? A state established religion? Or then you come to those most extreme ideas as Congressman Toomey puts them out there. Take our corporations and eliminate all their taxes. 66% of all corporations today pay zero taxes. Eliminate them all. You, it's hard to get below zero. And then take Social Security and invest it in the stock market. But he has an idea for the rest that might still be on some security as he takes the security out of the social security for those he invests with the brokers on Wall Street who then will make billions of dollars in fees. He says we'll borrow the rest from China. No. There is in his book such an extreme view that he actually says buying American is an unfortunate tendency. Where he actually says that it's a gift to American consumers that China illegally subsidizes its exports to America. This isn't about China. This is about policies that have already been put in place the first time he was down there. As he said, that a corporation that invests in a foreign factory in China, having closed its factory here, firing the employees, and then, as long as it reinvests its profits in China, where they subsidize illegally exports here, they get to add injury to harm. They get their profits to be exempt from all taxes if they reinvest in China. So now, he says, what we must do is eliminate all corporation taxes. I would ask, as I said, for your time. I honestly believe when we stood in front of that National Constitution Center, what a better setting underneath that wonderful beginning of that great peace that set this nation's laws. We the people. Not we the corporations. I need your time. I need it. Not for me. I've done my career. It's over. This is a passion. A passion where, yep, I want to pay back. I figure I've got 12 good years left. Because once I can't run in a parade, I shake everybody's hand. It's term limits for me.